love the planet and guard our freedom. And get rid of Gillard! Welcome tonight, and thank you very much for your support. Is this too loud? Yes. It is too loud. Hold it further away. Okay. Thank you very much for your support for freedom in this country. I want to thank the affiliated groups, the climate skeptics who have organized this tour, in particular uh, Leon Ashby and especially Andy Semple, who's gone through quite a lot in the last week and a half, which we'll discuss later. The other affiliated groups, the Galileo Movement, the website galileomovement.com.au, the Menzies House, and also Stop Julia Gillard's Carbon Tax Coalition. My name is Malcolm Roberts. I'm the project leader, a voluntary, uh, of the Galileo Movement. The Galileo Movement was formed by two retirees. Case Smith is a, a scientist who works on the environment and on health. And his uh, co-founder is John, John Smead, who's an award-winning engineer who provided clean air for operating theatres and industry. They know something about the environment, they know something about, the, about air, and they know a lot about science. And they are passionately <coughs> worried about this country. They are passionate to do something to protect the country for their grandkids. That's why they formed the Galileo Movement. The Galileo Movement has only one purpose, to axe the tax. And to do that, in a way that stops it coming back ever again by exposing the corruption of the science, expose the corruption that has been spread by the government in this country. We have a website, you'll see it's fairly detailed and we welcome you to come and visit it and to join and to also provide your skills and support because we've got some projects underway to axe the tax. I'd like to talk briefly about three words, care, core, and cure. Hallelujah. And those three words go in that order. Science and history show that human survival and success are due to care. It's in our genes. Hands up, still too loud, hands up if you do not, do not care about the environment. Hands up if you do not care about humanity. You see, we all care. Care is inherent for ourselves, our family, our friends, humanity, fellow creatures, our beautiful planet. Now, pollution hurts our health. It hurts productivity. It's wasteful. It's commercially stupid. And by damaging nature, pollution hurts us spiritually. Yet pollution and global warming are two completely separate topics. Because humans care, London's air is now far cleaner than at any time since the 1300s, six centuries ago. Just 160 years ago, thousands of Londoners died annually from chronic lung disease. Despite adding millions of people, millions of cars and massive industry, London's air is now far cleaner than at any time in the last 600 years. The genuine environmental movement is one of Earth's most important. And it has been made important and supported by modern science, technology, industry and civilization. Care, though, can be derailed through ignorance. In the 1970s, at the height of DDT's remarkable success eradicating malaria, it was banned by the United Nations, the United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP. Do you know that the ban was politically motivated and completely contradicted the science? In 2004, the UN's own World Health Organization condemned the ban and resumed the use of DDT. In DDT's absence, over 30 million people died agonizing deaths from malaria. 
including up to 20 million Africans, mostly in poverty. <coughs> DDT would have prevented their deaths. In this way, the putting of a political purpose ahead of the science by the United Nations politicized body has got 30 million deaths on its hands. Care can be derailed through ignorance. For care to be effective, care needs to be informed. When it comes to global warming, what I've seen is that people are largely misinformed. People across the country are expressing a range of feelings. Confusion, fear, guilt, frustration, resentment, anger, apathy, doubt. People are saying they need and are looking for truth, understanding, reassurance, security, confidence, hope, and clarity. Well, clarity emerges by examining the core to understand the issue. And that's what tonight is about, understanding the core issue. We've got three excellent speakers, and we've also hope to show you that the real core is freedom. Before I introduce the first speaker, let's go through that again. Axe the? Planet. Love the? Planet. Guard our? Freedom. Joe Nova, I've decided that I'm going to introduce these speakers with what's important to me. With each of the speakers, you'll find they're very qualified. We could take as long as their speeches to go through their qualifications and their experience. Joe is a, an accomplished writer. She's a TV compare. She's appeared on radio many, many times across the country. She has worked, she's very well known right across the country, especially on global warming issues. She has a science background, she's got a science qualification, she's passionate about the science. She understands the science, but more importantly, her character is what matters. She is courageous and outspoken. She's like the Annie Oakley of global warming. Smiling, guns blazing, and fearless in what she says, but everything she says is backed by fact. She's very well liked and admired and loved, and I welcome Joan over to the stage, and I'd like you to welcome her. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, they say we have no evidence. We have 28 million radio songs, 6,000 boreholes, 3,000 Argo boys, 30 years of satellite data, and 500 million years of history, at least as much as we know of it. And they call us the deniers. Welcome to the Orwellian world of climate in Wonderland. They're destroying the English language, aren't they? You think about it. They call it pollution. We know CO2 feeds life on Earth. They call us the paid industry hacks, and we're the volunteers. They call themselves independent scientists, and who pays them? The government. Exactly. They say they are modern scientists, and yet they break laws of reason known to the ancient Greeks. 2,400 years we've known that argument from authority is wrong, that argument from ignorance is no use, and yet 2,000 years after Aristotle, when you quote the IPCC, you get two for one. You can quote them and you get both errors at once in the same sentence. They say it's a free market, but everything about this market is fixed, isn't it? Think about, think about it. In a free market, you're free to choose to buy something or not. If I said, I've got a carbon credit, and you're free to choose whether you want one, 